Hello everybody, my name is Cyberwolf and welcome to Rainswept. Uh, this is a game where you are a detective trying to solve a simple case, but it starts to not be as simple as it as it seems. Um, and I've only seen like a tiny bit of this, just like screenshots and all that, but to be honest, this game looks really, really fantastic just right off the box. Just right off the bat, it just looks really fantastic. I love this opening scene here. I love the music of it. It's really just really setting the tone of this really well. I love it so much. Okay, so let's get into this. Monday, 12, 14 a.m. October 7th, 1996. Well, we're starting off strong here. Ooh. Frostwood Interactive. Wow. This... This is really... This is doing really well. Like, just... Just for being 2D, this feels... Very cinematic. Like, I could honestly imagine this as, like, a movie. This, honestly, looks really good. Really well done. <gasps> mm, excuse me. Okay. Uh, press E on keyboard or A on controller. Alright, I'm here. Time to see what this is all about. Okay, so... I'm gonna be using keyboard and all that to, uh, do this. So, um... Um, looks like interact is E, movement is A and D. I'm also going to need the, those, and space. Okay. Um, that's my car. I just got here. I'm not going back now. <laughs> oh, oh, I love the way he walks. What is this? I've been here a while, it looks like. Um... Terrible. What? I said terrible, terrible business, all this. Ha. Huh. This is only a matter of time. Everyone knows that. I know. Still, they were so young. Young and stupid, you mean. The stories I have heard. I guess you're right. It was just a matter of time. What? It was. A matter of time. It's really coming down today. We should get back home. A few more minutes. I want to see what happens. Nothing is going to happen. I'm going to catch a cold, that's all. Okay. So, uh, I guess let's talk to people. The crowd is too close to this crime scene. The number of cops are too few. This is poor. Now, what's he up to? Ma'am, please, you need to back away a little. What's happened here? A murder? Johnny, get under the umbrella. Granny, I want to leave. Can I go back to the shop? Could see this coming a mile away. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. All right, Johnny, let's go. There's no point standing here now. I knew this would happen. We should have done something. There's nothing we could have done. Chris is responsible, I'm so sure. It's hard to disagree, but let's not speculate. Detective Anderson, right? The chief is inside. We've been waiting for you. 
You need to control the crowd, officer. You need to push the crowd further from the scene, officer. What? We'll have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. The crowd! Handle them! There could be evidence out here! Oh, yes, I'm trying. Hey, hey, Williams, what the hell are you doing? Trying to prop up this tape, sir? It won't stay. Well, get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir! Richard! Don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Goodness. Sorry, Detective. Thing is, we're short of, mount we're short of manpower here. We weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. And to top this off, and to top it off, this rain out of nowhere. Just get the crowd under control. I'm heading inside. Yes, Detective. Don't worry. Richard! I mean, Williams! <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see what else is over here. Can I, can I just leave? Nope. Trees block him away. God damn those trees. Always blocking paths. Alright, so... I guess let's go ahead inside. Hmm, should I go in? Uh, let's go in. There's really no point on hanging around out here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I really need to work on my detective voice. <clears throat> that's the sheriff. I should talk to him first. There we go. I think that's I think that's fitting, Detective Anderson. He's a he's a gruff looking dude. He's he's been around this for far too long. Not very professional. I hope they know what they're doing. Is that guy's hat? Oh, <laughs> okay. That guy's head was like. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but this guy, there he is, <laughs> the police just went backwards. <laughs> oh, man. Michelle? Huh? Oh, Jesus, what's happening to me? Oh, boy. Uh, Detective, are you okay? Uh, I think so, yeah. Guess I'm just a little tired after the long drive here. Uh, Detective Anderson, right? The head office called in to say you'd be joining us here for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris, and this is Lieutenant Watt. We appreciate the department sending help, but er, I don't think we'll need it. This case is our this case is ready to be wrapped up. What do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head, looks self-inflicted. And Diane Miller, age 24, single bullet wound through the abdomen, the victim lived together, were unmarried. Um. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, any signs of intruder? Any signs of an intruder? No signs of forced entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. The officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There were no, there are no footprints outside that window, except the officers. He was careful. No signs of struggle or marks on the bodies either. Uh, time of death. According to the next door neighbor, a single gunshot was heard around uh zero zero fifteen hours. Um, he received the call at about uh. 020 hours, and we're here in another five minutes. We found them dead upon arrival and confirmed the timing. Okay. They heard a single gunshot, though. Doesn't that seem a little suspicious that there are two gunshot wounds? Well, two, two gunshot victims here? Uh, no, just, uh, just pointing that out here. The weapon? I mean, it's right there, I can see it, but... What do you know about the weapon? Both shots were fired from a M1911 A1 uh, 45 caliber pistol. The ballistics report will let us know more. Any witnesses? Just the next door neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. Single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Alright, I'm out of questions. Honestly speaking, Detective, we think it's pretty obvious what's taking place here. What do you mean? They had a reputation. 
they weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows this. Dan Diane was shot at point-blank range with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. He then went ahead and shot himself, as the wound is clearly self-inflicted. So you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. <laughs> Excuse me. Being a little gassy this morning. Um, question their abilities. I'm begging. I'm beginning to think it was a very good idea. In fact, I er, uh, it's obviously a case of murder suicide, detective. So everything's figured out already. So we've got it all figured out here already, huh? If that was sarcasm, I'll ignore it. But yes, more or less. I er, are you suggesting there was domestic violence involved? It would seem so. It was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, rumors? You may call it that, but, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not sure that. And they were never really able to fit in this town. They were new here. Moved in about six months ago. Never got out much. Didn't make any friends. We don't need to, an uh, to analyze the obvious detective. That would be only inef uh, inefficient. Officer Blunt will assist you <laughs> through the course if you, uh, of your work here. Hello, Detective. Uh, one more thing. We're looking to wrap this case up pretty quickly and cleanly. We don't want to drag it, uh, drag it if it can be helped. We have an important uh, festival coming around in a week's time. So you might say this is a rather bad timing. So there's no need to go around complicating things, all right? Just get me a story that works, and we can close this case quickly. Um, okay. Good. I shall see you later. Goodbye. Okay, then. Um, anyway. Have a look around the room. If you'd like, come talk to me when you're done. Okay. Let's have a look at this body. Hmm. What's this? Is there a note? Oh! Chris, 96. It's signed Chris, 96. I'm guessing Chris built uh, some of the furniture around this house. Hmm. Gunshot to the stomach. Damage in the residue would suggest the shot was taken at point blank range. That rules out the possibility of her being shot from the open window. Uh, she would have been in line of sight from the outside, though. There's no mistaking it. The perpetrator would have to be inside the house to cause this kind of wound. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. Uh, is this just gonna say the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Not very professional. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, let's talk to Officer Blunt. Hey, Detective. Need any help? What's the plan? Have a look around the room. Once you're done, talk to- okay. Uh, as the lieutenant said, it looks pretty old. Uh, it can hold seven rounds. There are four rounds still in here, which means three rounds were fired from this gun at some point of time. If two were fired last night, where is the third? Was it used on some other guy? The gun belongs to Chris, according to Lieutenant Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else that could have known where to kept uh, where they kept this gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of forced entry. Could it be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? No one I can think of. <clears throat> God damn. Uh, 45 ACP rounds. It's a box of 20 rounds. There are 13 here, which means 7 are missing. 2 were used last night. There are 4 left in the gun, as we saw earlier. If 2 were used last night, there's still 1 unaccounted for. The same thing we just learned. Was that used on some other day? This really looks unexpected, to be completely honest. Bullet wound from the head. 
The skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. His body position and the way he fell would indicate that he was sitting sideways on the chair, facing where Diane's body is now. The angle of the shot indicates that uh, he was shot from his side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the refrigerator. No clues there, though. He could have been shot from the window. At the moment, it's shut. Mu uh, must get it checked for fingerprints and footprints outside. Could someone have entered and left through here? We should, uh, uh, we should have the fingerprint results in a couple of days, Detective. Don't forget, there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris would have sat facing the refrigerator. That would make sense, the way the killer uh, wouldn't need to enter the house. But in that case, who shot Diane? Examine the hand. Hmm, gunpowder residue on his right hand. Hard to disagree with the lieutenant here. There's a strong evidence of the victim shooting himself, unless it was made to look that way. The chair's fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. Hmm. It definitely looks like he was sitting up when he was shot, because there's... Or, rather that... No, that's wine. Hmm. So, really, it still could be either. Red wine. Looks like a new bottle was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. It would seem that Chris was sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane, where he was waiting for her or someone else. We don't know yet. A glass of wine was knocked over. It looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in here as well. How did blood splatter in this direction? It doesn't make sense. Officer Blunt, I think there has been more than the two gunshots that we're seeing here. Hmm. Is that everything? Uh, no, that was, that was everything, I think. I'm definitely suspecting foul play here. Or rather... This case doesn't seem as simple as everyone believes it to be, is my hypothesis. Uh, can I examine that window? Bleh. Okay, apparently not. At least not yet. I said I could hold shift to run, right? I'm trying, it just doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, let's talk to the lieutenant. Shall we proceed? Yes, I'm done. All right, let's have a chat with Mr. Williams outside. Uh, ugh, jeez. Rain has finally let up. Ooh, coffee! I really like you, uh, Officer Blunt. You seem really cool. Right, this is Mr. Williams. He lives right next door. Coffee, Detective? Yes, please. You can ask him any question you may have about last night. Right, Mr. Williams. Could you tell me everything that you saw or heard during last night's events? Well, see, I'd headed off to bed at around 11 p.m., as I usually do, after a glass of whiskey. Helps me sleep, you know. Anyway, somewhere around 12, 15 a.m., I'd say I was woken up by a loud bang. I ran, uh, I ran to me... I, I ran to me bedroom, bedroom window, apparently he's a pirate now, that looked straight down at the at their place. And what'd you see? Nothing. Their kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went to me phone and called Lieutenant Watts here straight away. Uh how long did it take you to get to the window? About a couple of seconds, Detective. Not more than five I'd say. Nearly fell off my uh, nearly fell out of my bed when I heard the shots, so you might say I was halfway there already. Uh, did you see anyone at all on the street? No, detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. You said you heard one gunshot. Yes. The whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good, so if there's been more, I didn't hear him. 
move on to other questions. Do you live alone? Yes, I do. Now I got married. It's a sigh. Long story. One meant to be talked over a couple of whiskeys. Know what I mean? <laughs> Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? I know. I was just at home, you see. Am I a suspect? It's procedure, Mr. Will. I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. Um. I mean, that is pretty unprofessional. But I'm just gonna keep quiet about it. Did you have many visitors? No, no. Not at all, in fact. In all this time, I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car, and Father Smith came over a couple times when they would newly moved in. A year back, almost. Nah, people rarely even visit him because they mostly kept to themselves, see? Never made any friends here. But sometimes folks don't like those kinds either. So I can't really say, you know what I mean? No. Please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. No one really knew them. They never got out much. Any other information you'd like to share? I uh, don't know if this is useful, but you might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple, t a couple of times, usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early, so maybe that's why I never heard all this before, but a couple of times, I was up a little later. One night, about a month ago, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud sounds, like stuff being flung around and such, see? I heard someone crying. It was. Uh, I was thinking to myself that maybe I should call the police, but then it quieted down all of a sudden. We never received any calls of dom from domestic violence, but people have, have often talked of stories of this kind. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? Well, I was up, I was up late night writing an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere between 1st and 3rd last month. 1st and 3rd September, alright. Anything else? No, that's all I know about this. Right, thank you for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. No problem. And, uh, thanks for the coffee. Hmm. So, I mean, this kind of, this case kind of feels like it's leading in both directions right now. Like, I mean, there definitely seems like motive for, um, for domestic violence. But, at the same time, Seem it, it, it seems like it seems like there's more to it than that right now. Well, I think that clears up a lot of things. I don't think so. One single gunshot. Only one gunshot. But there are two gunshots on our victims and one missing bullet. So I don't think it's answered everything yet. I think it's answered half the things, but I still have a good few important, very important questions. It has. Oh, come on, detective. You're supposed to be good at these things, aren't you? Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots, and there are no signs of anyone force, uh, forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? Um... Okay, but there was also an open window. We know that for sure. And we're not going to get the fingerprints in yet, but we can check for footprints. I mean, it was raining all of a sudden, so maybe that probably washed him away. But still, it might be important. There might be clues outside the window. Mm. Doesn't prove anything, jumping to conclusions, seriously. We don't know the complete picture yet. Um, the amount of information we have as of now is very little. It's not the complete picture. We need to dig deeper if we want to know the truth and not just confirm our suspicions. Well, er, assumptions. Well, what? What about the door, huh? How was it locked from the inside? Explain that. I checked the door. It locks itself from the inside when you pull it close. Regardless of where you pull it from the outside or push it from inside. That sounds pretty handy. I wish I had a door that did that. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying 
that there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you'd like, detective. You won't find anything new here. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself, but of course the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap up this case before the festival, so don't expect him to wait for more than a week. Uh, ha I have to head to the station now. Officer, escort Detective Anderson to his hotel. Will do, sir. We'll come back in the evening in search of the house. In ser and to search the house. Letters, diaries, things of that sort. All right. When can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner. But I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look around the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets, but hmm. We're actually glad. Uh, we're actually glad that you're here. You know, although the sheriff and lieutenant wants would rather not admit it, even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last hundred years or so. We have no idea how to deal with it. Um, I mean, it's all right. I know what you mean. I just joined the forest a month back, for instance. And a murder already? I'm not sure if I'm ready. I kind of knew them, you could say. i never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's kind of weird a bit. Sad. I know as an officer I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. But God, excuse me. You'll be fine. Give it time. Thanks, detective. That means a lot. Um, tell me about Chris and Diane. Well, not much. It's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody knew them, really. They came in They came in here, kept to themselves. You'd hear stories about them. Everyone thought they were some kind of weirdos. I admit, I kind of agree that agree with that sentiment, too. I feel bad about, them, about that now. There's no reason to make assumptions about people's character, and character can't be used as evidence. So I'd really like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. What's this festival next week about? Oh, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair on the Market Street, there's food, rides. We get a lot of tourists from nearby states around that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. That, of course, is less important in the light of recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases before, based on our assumptions. Uh, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these were people's lives that ended, and it's our job to figure out what really happened. So I guess I'm saying is, you can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. Okay. I'm hoping the local police will let me do the job I've been sent to do, though. I don't mean you. Detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an asshole. I'm serious. He doesn't care about anything except running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy the festival week. I hate people like that. Lieutenant Watts, though, he's really sweet. I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but... Oh my god. What just happened? I saw her. She was right there. Why am I seeing her? Why am I see thinking of her? Okay. Well, that was a little weird. Uh, does this game have a save? Ah, it does. Okay, good. Um, I'm just going to save right here, and I will pick up next time. Um, this game is really good. Like, just, just like the 2D and simplistic style of this, it kind of feels like an interactive movie almost just like really really 2d's and simplistic interactive movie like it's it's just really good I can't stop talking about that but uh, if you guys want to play this game for yourselves I'll leave a link to it in the description below but thank you guys so much for watching please give this video a like please share with friends and don't forget to subscribe on my own this is Cyberwolf signing off